Neil here from Phase Drive Media with another episode of PDM Vlogs. So today we're going to talk again about impulse responses. Now I know in season one we had three episodes about impulse responses and I said in episode three that was the last episode but I forgot about acoustic IRs and why have they become important? Well, um, I've recently lent out all my mics and um, I needed a way of getting some good quality acoustic sounds into the computer by direct injecting. So they proved to be a useful tool to make those direct inject sounds more real. So we are using trusty Straight Naked Venus, which is a great guitar. Um, about 500 quid. It's direct inject sound is, well, typical direct inject sound. It's fairly thin and reasonably lifeless. Um, so I wanted something to give that a bit more kind of body life presence, whatever. And um, impulse responses seem to be a good way of doing it. So our good friends at Three Sigma Audio do a range of um, acoustic IRs. They've got acoustic classical mandolins, string, ukuleles and basses. We, we are testing today some acoustic IRs, some acoustic bass IRs and a Rickenbacker IR just to see what those can do to various sounds. We've got three uh, IRs for the acoustic. So there's our, our Faith Naked Venus. So the guitars that we are uh, emulating, so the IRs, are this little lot. So these are the spec sheets from 3 Sigma Audio. So the Martin D45. Uh, again, it gives you all the details about how they recorded it, and it's pretty good. You know, SSL G series preamp, and um, pretty good verses, good microphones. Taylor 6112 CE, uh, Gibson J45. So those are the three acoustic models we've got. We've got a project set up. We'll run through those and see how they compare. And I've got the automation switching the IR loader in and out so you can see what the difference makes. We've also got this uh, Cordoba Hauser nylon guitar IR. Um, I haven't got a nylon guitar. If I had a cheap nylon guitar, it might be an interesting um, experiment to see what the direct injected tone for the nylon guitar is like on its own or with the IR on top. But I haven't got a nylon guitar, so um, I've used um, one of our plugins. Um, so it's not necessarily the best test of this IR, but it gives some idea of what it can do. If you have a better plug-in, like Orange Tree Samples nylon guitar plug-in, which I'm considering, um, then it might make a difference and we might do some experimentation later on with that. So we've also got this Ricky 4003 bass plug-in, so I thought I'd take some bass samples that I've recorded before and just put that on top and see what difference it makes. So the bass samples are recorded with a Fender Deluxe Jazz bass and I just wanted to see what difference that made. And then finally, we got this German bass IR, which is taken on from a, an 1890s German three quarter scale bass, and they're not cheap things. Um, so I thought that'd be interesting again to put it on top of some plugins. So we've got um, some HSE, High and Sonic SE double bass samples, and a couple of um, NI double bass plugins to, to have a look at. So that's all the kind of um, IRs we're using. So the actual guitars they're based on. So an Artin D45 is $12,000. So an IR, 10 quid a pop, is a little bit cheaper. Not necessarily good. Money in objects, I'd have that and a, you know, really top end mics and you know, have a whale of a time. But, you know, in realistic budget land, that is quite a good option. So Taylor, again, $3,500. Gibson J45, cheap. Cheap version at two thousand seven hundred forty-nine, uh, and the Kawada Hauser is five thousand dollars. So, yeah, not cheap. Um, the Ricky four thousand three will set you back about two grand in this country, and a, an eighteen ninety German three-quarter scale bass is thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. So, not particularly cheap things that we're emulating. So, you know, this is a a budget option. Obviously not as good as the real thing and a load of expensive mics and converters and preamps, but you know, one has to be practical. So I've set up a project, we'll just go through what we've got here. So we've got the Faith, same sample from the Faith, 
uh, direct injected um, with the, the IR on top. Now the loader I'm using is good old red wires mix IR3. It's a very flexible um, IR loader and it coats all sorts of stuff right from 20 second reverbs down to cap. So it's a really good loader to use this sort of thing. So for each of the acoustic tests, we've got the relevant um, impulse response loaded and like I say, the automated transmission in and out so you can tell, see the difference. For the nylon guitar, we have got the Sonic SE. So this is basically um, natural nylon that no expression of the pace, um, and it's part of the Pro, Sonic SE2 Pro set, which comes with Cubase Pro, um, and it's brilliant. It's the best one I've got, brilliant. It's not fantastic, but you know, it'll do for the purpose of this test. Uh, we've also got the SR Brighton Bass, which is part of the Artist Library, which comes with Elements, Artist and Pro, as part of the uh, test for the German Bass IR. So for the, the Ricky test, I've got um, a sample, an audio sample from my jazz bass, uh, and basically it's going through this little beauty. No, no cabinet. I think this is a Trace Elliott clone um, from the Steinberg VST bass amp plugin, which again is part of uh, Cubase Pro. And on the IR side, we have a Rickenbacker IR from 3 Sigma Audio, and then we've got the Celestian um, speaker cab. So on the German Base by our tests, we've got three plugins. So we start with Hangon Sonic SE, again, the SR right base from the artist library. We've then got a couple of native instruments plugins. So one is this upright base, which I think from memory is part of their standard selection. Upright base, okay. yeah, so it's the contact factory selection. And the other one is just a contemporary version from their Kiva like no, to me that's a, it's a quite nice sounding double bass. That's it in terms of plugins and IR. So what I'm going to do is going to run the project and as each one is playing I'll open up the relevant IR loader. So let's run it and see how it sounds. So there we go. So my thoughts on that. Um, well, I think the acoustic guitar IR make a huge difference. They actually make the um, direct injected sound sound 
breathable and usable. Um, you know, a little bit more EQ and compression, I think that speaker's pretty damn good. And within the mix, I don't think you're going to notice a lot of difference. Um, the called Boda nylon guitar I, I did improve it. Um, kind of part of that was down to the massive great reverb I put in there as well. Um, but again, that was an improvement over the standard uh, plug in. Um, but I think I, in an ideal world, they'd get a better plug in or um, a sort of budget nylon guitar. Um, but yeah, budget nylon guitar is going to be 500 quid plus, so you know. Moment, that's not really an option, don't have that much use for Narnia. So, um, the Ricky IR, yeah, gave the bass some nice, kind of typical Ricky punch and um, sort of depth. So, quite like that. Um, so, if you're looking for a slightly different tone and you don't want to go through uh, sort of having new EQ, and then to give it that kind of Ricky character, which putting that on is, is quite, quite a good sort of, you know, shortcut. Um, for the German basses, um, it depends on what you're looking for. I think the uh, the IR kind of mutes it down and makes it much more earthy and woody um, and sometimes you want that and it gives, gives it a sense of kind of realism which I quite like uh, but sometimes you'll want just the you know the, the straight plug-in and with its kind of own character um, but yeah I quite like the effect they have so you know quite impressed with those so overall yeah acoustic IR they do make a little bit of a difference and I think they're worth worth exploring particularly if you're like me again you've either not got the right mics to mic up your acoustic guitar um, or you just want to add a little bit of extra tone and depth you can blend the IR in as much or as little as you like um, and you know some of that kind of expensive tone if you like coming from a very much more expensive instrument um, might actually make the difference between you know um, a good sounding acoustic guitar or you know, or, you know not too interesting acoustic guitar so yeah I hope that will be useful Go and have a look, explore these. The, the IRs aren't particularly expensive, and like we've um, shown in previous episodes, you can get some very good cheap IR loaders, which will probably handle these IRs. Even if you decide to purchase them, they're $10 a pack, they're not massively expensive, um, so it's sort of probably worth a look if you're looking to improve your acoustic guitar or custom guitar. Thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next episode. See you later.